Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Kickin' Bass TV. Today, we're gonna be talking about the summer to fall transition, talking about the two key factors that will let you know when it's starting to happen in your area, because it will happen at different times depending on where you live in the country. Talk about where bass are moving to this time of year, and also give you guys some bait suggestions. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so today we're talking about the summer to fall transition. A difficult time of year for some anglers, but we're gonna try to simplify it for you today, starting with the two key factors that will let you know when the transition is starting to happen in your area. Number one, less daylight, meaning shorter days. The sun is essentially rising later and setting earlier. Second giveaway is going to be a drop in your overnight temps. Now, even though you'll experience consistently warm summer temps leading into September, as soon as you feel that 15 to 20 degree drop in your overnight temp, that's the beginning of the fall transition. That's when you wanna key in on those fall bass patterns. That's when you wanna to switch to your fall baits. This is gonna happen at different times depending on where you live in the country. Those of you that live in the Southern region will be a couple of weeks behind the Central and Western states. And those anglers that live up North are used to their temperatures dropping a couple of weeks ahead of the rest of us, usually around mid to late August. When it comes to fall patterns, starting with those shallow fry garter bass that spent the majority of the summer along the bank and in those grass lines, they're gonna to start to push out and hold the long main points like this one here in the center, as well as this pinch point leading into this cove where they can trap bait fish. And ultimately, they're looking for the deepest water where they're gonna spend the majority of the winter. So if you can locate that deep water point in your lake and then key in on that ledge and drop off point, that's where they'll be popping up and down to feed throughout the fall. When it warms back up, they can pop to that offshore or rock, those humps, ledges, that underwater structure or cover, and that last surviving grass as that area will be more rich in oxygen compared to the areas where the grass has started to die. When it comes to lure selection for the fall transition, starting with top water, this is the time of year where I usually switch from throwing frogs to whopper cloppers and buzz baits. Specifically have a ton of success in this area throwing a downsized quarter ounce Strike King buzz bait mini, and then you've gotta have lipless crankbaits. I've got a variety of styles from this heavy, slender body style that falls faster through the column and is good at coming through grass. Then I've got my year round favorite here, which is the Cotton Cordell Super Spot. I've also got this really cool suspending lipless crankbait that I got from Six Cents, as well as some downsize options like this baby perch and a quarter ounce fire tiger. After that, probably the most effective way to quickly cover water during the transition to locate bass is a square bill. We're gonna start off by throwing this baby bass pattern here because we know we don't have shad in this lake. So what we see them feeding on are perch, bluegill, sunfish, even other bass hats right along this drop-off point. Sure enough, second or third cast, just working that ledge, and we've got our first fall transition bass of the year, and he got him on the crankbait. For my deep cranks, I've got things like my vintage Bill Dance fat-free shad, some Livingtons, some Normans, everything from that tight wobble to that wide erratic hunting action. When it comes to bait fish imitators, it's really tough to beat a Texas rig weightless fluke this time of year. Also, our dead ring or swim bait is a great bait fish imitator, whether you rig it weedless or set it up on an exposed hook like this six cents divine swim bait head. When you've got a large population of shad, sometimes it can be hard to stick out in that big cloud of bait fish and draw that strike, that's where you can throw that underspin blade on, a little bit of extra flash, help you draw that bite. Then of course, I've always got at least one heavy flipping jig, a lighter finesse jig that I can throw a craw or grub trailer on, and a swim jig. Another great option for fall is a spinner bait. You can throw them in a variety of different profiles and colors. They are essentially weedless in the water, which means you can fish them in a lot of different areas, and they're a good bait fish imitator. You can use single, double, triple, Colorado, or willow blades with a trailer or without. Last but not least is gonna be the Texas rig. I've got this tied on 12 months out of the year, one of my rods at all times, because it's a great producer of fish, versatile bait. You can use a variety of soft plastics from a grub to a craw to a Cinco, finesse worm, swim bait. You get that weedless presence in the water. And once you've done your power fishing, you've located where those bass are stacked up, you can pick those areas apart by slowing it down, throwing those Texas rigs, soft plastics, or those jigs around those areas. And as you can see, right away, we're already getting back into them. So we've got our second fall transition bass of the year already. And we got this one 
on the Texas rig. So hopefully these tips have helped you guys have some more success this season during the fall transition leading into the winter. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, hit that like button for me down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, because that's the best way to show your support. Until next time, I'm D with Kickin' Bass TV. Subscribe!